Chapter 3 Advanced Material Design Challenges and Solutions for LED And the topic of review What is LED? LED consists of a PN junction diodes. These kind of diodes allow current passing through forward direction and block current flow in the reverse direction. It is made of a very thin layer of semiconductor. Of course, this device will emit colored light at a spectral wavelength. So actually, how this kind of device work? A band-to-band -band recombination is the main mechanism that describes the carrier activity within an LED. When an electron in the conduction band meets a hole in the valence band, it falls to lower energy level, or so it called valence band, and releases energy in a form of photon. The electron drops from band to band. When an LED is forward bias or forward direction, the bands bend slightly in a way to decrease the energy barrier between the N and P type semiconductors. This reduced energy barriers enables more of the majority carriers to diffuse to the opposite side of the junction. Since the electron or from the N side become the minority once they reach the P side, recombination is more likely to occur. So the energy gap between conduction and valence band at an emitter is a very simplified uh, mechanism on how LED work. The luminescence of LED is highly dependent on how much the electrical current that was applied. Basic LED structure. Of course, all of you are familiar by now. This is the typical structure of a single layered LED which consists of cathode, emitting layer, or an anode. So the first LED actually was reported back in 1928 by Oleg Losev. He was a Russian genius. Multilayered structure LED. Following the research of the first introduced LED, many scientists introduced a multilayered LED structure. So, for example, the first one is the electron injection layer, EIL, electron transport layer, ETL, emitting layer, EML, hole transport layer, HTL, and hole injection layer, HIL. This is an example of the structure that was mentioned above. In compared with the single layer, this consists of five layered materials for the LED itself. Organic light emitting diodes, OLEDs. Of course, all of you are familiar by now. All most of our electronic, of electronic uh, appliances or devices uses OLED technology. For example, a flat panel display, and also your smartphones, of course. And also for lighting, there is bannables like this. OLED characteristics. Of course, the first one is flexible and it is actually printable. It has a wider viewing angle, meaning that the viewing angle of your devices is not limited of a certain narrow viewing angle. It has a wide operating temperature. It has a color temperature tenability. Of course, high resolution, sharper image, better contrast ratio lower power consumption and transparent lightweight extremely thin varying size and shape meaning that we can produce this OLED in a small scale and a larger scale and also it is a reflective like a mirror so the history of OLEDs the first OLEDs was invented in 1993 by Kiros Group. In 2008, 
OSRAM introduced an LED-based hybrid table lamp called P OLEDs. In 2009, Philips launched OLED LED panel called LumiBlades. In the following years, Fraunhofer, Comet produced transparent panels. MKM Verbating produced first color-tenable OLED panels. Panasonic developed OLED panel with uh, 100,000 hours of a lifetime. The acuity of band developed OLED lighting with a variety of color, color temperature. AL Kilu, or as you call it, LQLU, sells affordable OLED lighting products from only ranges between $70 to $60. Other companies such as GE, Lumiotech, Konica, Minolta, NEC Lighting enhances this kind of OLED products for the wide variety of consumer markets. As mentioned before, the basic structure of OLEDs consists of three layers, cathode, emitting layer, and anode. The thin organic emitting layer is sandwiched between these two electrons. So the light emission in OLEDs is called a result of uh, electroluminescence (EL). Properties of high efficient OLEDs. So this is the approaches for fabricating high efficiency OLEDs. The three properties that we have to focus on is the OLEDs must have high IQE, low operation voltage, and high light out coupling efficiency. High IQE and low operation voltage is depending on the directly on the material and the device architecture itself. For example, to develop a new light material with a high photoluminescence quantum yield PLQI and high IQE. High light out coupling efficiency, this is depends on the total internal reflection TIR of the substrate. OLED materials. Device efficiencies depending on the design of materials and the materials itself for the functional layers. For example, the first one, fluorescent material, result in an emission of light due to relaxation of the singlet excitations. Therefore, low internal quantum efficiency, IQE, and external quantum efficiency, EQE. So this fluorescent material, the IQE that was produced is 25%, and the EQE is 5%. The second one is phosphorins. Produce light with a mixed effect of singlet and triplet excitons from the organic molecules, resulting in almost 100% IQE. It is four times efficient from the previous material that I mentioned, which is fluorescent. However, it is very costly due to the use of heavy metal complexes. Some phosphorin materials with long triplet decay lifetime at a higher current densities may reduce the device efficiency. IR, OS, and PT are mainly used because of their capability of uh, emission at room temperature. This is the heavy metal that we mentioned earlier. So the third one is the thermally activated delayed fluorescence TADF. This material can produce up to 100% IQE, EQE around 20%, which is actually exceeding fluorescent and comparable to the previous fluorescence based OLEDs. This attractive of TADF is uh, without using heavy metal components. OLEDs fabrication techniques and design challenges. There are two types of fabrication for OLEDs. The first one by using thermal evaporation and the second one is using solution process deposition of organic materials. So the, for the first one, the thermal evaporation, the, uh, there are several advantages that we have which is uh, it can achieve high efficiency, immaculate deposition and a very precise layer thickness control. However, the disadvantages are it is extremely expensive due to the huge wastage of the organic materials in the chamber. It is up to 
The second fabrication type is the solution process deposition of organic materials. It uses methods like coating or printing. So, if any fabrication process that is involve coating or printing, it is conclusively highly cost effective and suitable for mass manufacturing for sure and also it has a large area of displays however problem with this method are the solubility of some organic materials in various organic solvents the undesired blending of two organic uh, layers during subsequent coatings and the morphological and compositional uh, defects in the organic layer itself. Polymer light emitting diodes, PLEDs. The properties of PLEDs. Polymer is a chain molecular couple repeat units. It can be dissolved in most of the organic solvents. It has a wide deposition method such as uh, spin coating or even inject printing. Uh, it is homogeneous very robust and low fabrication cost and possibility of large area display. The PLEDs architecture. Typical PLEDs architecture is similar to the other LED except the emitting layer can be consist of hybrid structure of polymer and non-organic layers or a pure organic structure where all the emissive and transporting layer are organic materials. Pilot architecture can be divided into four categories. The first one is bottom emitting conventional. Second one is bottom emitting inverted. The third one is top emitting conventional. And the final one is the top emitting inverted. So this is the architecture of PLANs that I mentioned earlier. So the first one is the conventional of the forward structure of PLEDs. And the second one is the inverted structure of the PLEDs. What is the difference between these two types of architecture? The forward structure, the EL, is emitted from the ITO glass side. Similar with inverted structure, the EL is also emitted from the ITO or glass side. For the forward structure, the ITO function as an anode. As for the inverted structure, the ITO is used as a, a cathode metal and directly covered with EIL, ETL. For the forward structure, the polymer immersive layer is sandwiched between HIL, HTL, and ETL, EIL. The cathode metals uh, used for forward structure, for example, is barium, aluminium, calcium aluminium or lithium fluoride LIF aluminium are uh, atop of these layers. Whereas for the inverted structure, the anode metals used are aluminium, argentum and aurum. For forward structure, it is the most common of the architecture that is used for pilots. Both structure, however, is equally efficient and stable. However, the inverted structure has the a beneficial in air stable EL operations due to its application of air stable top metals such as AUN argentum mentioned earlier. The substrate that is commonly used are glass transparent covered with conductive ITO to emit the EL light from the substrate. The substrate must be freestanding and covered with high conductive electrode film. For example, PET or polyamide PI polymer covered with conductive polymer or graphene. Emissive layers, EML, materials and fabrication challenges. The emissive layer polymer are used in EMLs in Pilots. The first one is the fluorescent polymers. This is the first generation of polymer emitters used in pilots. For example, polyfluorine PF, polyphenylene valen PPV, polythiophene PTH, and other of their derivatives. It can emit high blue light with a wavelength of 420 to 460 nanometer. 
and has excellent chemical and optical thermal stability with high PL quantum efficiency BLQE and high charge mobility. However, this material suffers from spectral instability arising from the green emission color fluorine defect formation. However, the solutions are we can covalently, uh, covalently bond the PPF segment with the dibenzoethiopine as as dioxide SO with the unit uh, an additional green efficient benzothiazole BT. This results in a quite efficient of uh, RGB lighting. Second one is phosphorescent polymers. Phosphorescent polymers containing heavy atoms such as IR, UMPT. These types of polymers can easily match for green and red emitters, but hardly realize what the blue counterpart. The EL efficiencies of blue and white PLANs, however, remain restrained and limited. However, the solutions are a very efficient blue electrophoresis polymer is synthesized by use introducing furpic bicyclometallated iridium complex to the site of the PZC PO derivatives through a covalent linkage. This resultant uh, pilot blue uh, can achieve up to EQE of 9%. TADF polymers. The TADF polymers was first realized by Nikolaenko in 2015. These types of pellets showed a very bright green EL emissions, low light turn-on voltage which is around 3 volts, and a peak of EQE of 10%. However, the drawback of uh, TADF polymer pellets is typically high driving voltage and thus lower the power efficiencies. In order to achieve high QE and low voltage driving of uh, TADF pellets with high PE, the low PLQE and balance transport issue of pristine TADF must first be solved. The fourth one is white polymers. A white polymer WP is defined as a single polymer that can emit white LED under both PL and EL excitations. These applications is very good for solid state lighting or backlight of the television sets. The strategies towards creating efficient white EL polymers is fluorescent phosphorescent hybrid WPs, fluorescent TDF hybrid WPs, and also exciplex based WPs. These three strategies are promising for achieving both satisfied white quality and EL efficiencies close to IQEs of 100%. Fabrication of PLED using facial inject printing patterning followed by transfer painting. Poly 3,4 ethylene dioxythiopine polystyrene sulfate P.PSS and polydimethyl siloxane PDMS are typical conductive polymers and transparent elastomers respectively which are widely used in the field of stretchable uh, electronics. This for example the pattern highly conductive P.PSS electrode on top of the organic layers without any solvent related damage transfer fitting and then with the pressing followed with the peeling off and the higher transfer of period versus ink blended with the 10% width uh, percentage of the D sorbitol is function as a, a adhesion property. So with that adhesion property, it shows that uh, the solid form of period PSS is transformed into a viscous and sticky film when heated around 50 degrees C uh, temperature. Then you can simply clear it off and transfer printing of the PDPSS that you fabricated. These are the figures that show the device characteristics of P pilot on glass which is defined by a black square and A pilot on glass uh, red circle a pilot on PEN, which is a green triangle. So all of these devices showed 
an almost same turn on voltage which is around 2.2 volts which was defined at uh, 1 candela per square meter current and power efficiencies at uh, 1000 candela per square meter were also similar which is around 10.4 to 10.6 candela per ampere and also 7.1 to 8.0 lumen per watt although there is a slight difference between their profiles which actually they believe came from the device structures and physics such as the energy barrier charge injection and interface property and top and bottom efficiency uh, emission characteristics the device characteristics of all devices are summarized here in term one this group achieve excellent transfer printing yield blended p dot pss ink formulation which was optimized and addition properties of each film with various substrates at each step were very well controlled thanks to the uh, method of easy patterning and no solvent damage to organic layers for the transfer printing process excellent performances of ap lens were successfully demonstrated on both rigid and flexible substrates and various pixel shapes and features were highly customized demonstration of all solution process array showed a promising potential for all solution process commercial displays a pilot strategy it is believed to have a great path toward low cost and large area manufacturing thank you everyone and have a good day.